George Clooney and Brad Pitt's new movie, Wolves, is on Apple TV Plus September 27th. That's where I want you to be now. So if you want to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt, go to Apple TV Plus. You got to start the story there. Or if you want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney, go to Apple TV Plus. I am enjoying the show. And if you want to see their new movie, Wolves, you can't do it, we help you out. I can do it. So do it. Definitely go to Apple TV Plus. Admit it. It's cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Wolves, streaming September 27th on Apple TV Plus. Rated R. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, Missed Connections Part 2 by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. Hello, everybody. I am your host, Greg Audino, and welcome back to the podcast where I narrate content to improve the different relationships in your life. And welcome back specifically to part two of a post from author and full-time traveler Colin Wright. If you're new here, you might want to check out yesterday's episode first to hear part one. That would be episode 621. Might want to check out the other eight trillion episodes we have too across all of the podcasts in the old universe because they're all gold in my opinion. But you're here now. So if you are all caught up, let's get right into it and continue optimizing your life. Missed Connections Part 2 by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com I prefer to be a complete individual first, and this is part of why I date very carefully and actually very seldom. A complete individual has trouble dating anyone except other complete individuals, and this is not something we're encouraged to be. It's a shockingly rare trait. Groups of people are easier to sort and manage. Pairs of people can form families, can be predictable, organizable members of society. It's not some kind of conspiracy that we're encouraged to pair off in this way. It's just practical, traditional. Things have worked this way for a long time for many different reasons, and as such, our whole social infrastructure is based around it. People who fall outside of this schema, then, can make those who play by the rules a little uncomfortable. Because an odd number is someone with whom you cannot double date. They're also someone who isn't on the same lifestyle track as you. No marriage, no kids, no mortgage. You lack the shared concerns that tend to make for better friendships. To some, you may even seem like a threat, like some kind of potential spouse stealer. Not good. These are not things we think about consciously, of course, but they're things that we act upon. Part of what makes the waitstaff uncomfortable when I walk in the door is that the smallest table they've got is a two-seater. Even our restaurant's interiors are predicated on pairs or larger groups, and an individual is relegated to the bar, where he or she can hopefully find someone that they can bring back to a table someday. I understand the desire to settle, at least in the historical context. Settle as in settle down, I mean, though it can sometimes more clearly resemble settling in the context of silt at the bottom of a lake. The idea of settling down is to find someone with whom you can start a family, enjoy the years you're both fortunate to have, and hopefully find some meaning along the way. Modern technology and society has thrown a stick in those spokes, though. I hear a lot of talk about millennials, a generation that is often talked down about by Gen Xers and baby boomers because they defy much of what these other generations took for granted. Owning homes, having a bunch of kids, two cars in the garage, working for the same company your entire life. These are things that were once reliable aspects of life, but aren't any longer. The millennials' rejection of these recent traditions in order to avoid getting into an immense debt to cease consuming more than is necessary and to refocus on doing work that they're passionate about rather than something that will simply pay the bills is confounding to many of their parents and older contemporaries. But the way millennials approach relationships can stir up scorn in their older peers. We're a generation that was exposed to the internet at a youngish age, and younger millennials cannot remember a time in which they were not connected to a significant percentage of the global population via this network. Think about that for a second. That means this generation is aware of many, many more variables than those who came before them. 
it means they are aware of different ways of looking at the world and the consequences of their, and their forebears' actions. While once a person would be exposed to perhaps a few hundred people over the course of their entire life, now each and every person with a smartphone in their pocket and a social network sending them way too many notifications each day is exposed to millions of people, hundreds of millions. Their reach is godlike compared to members of any other generation before them. So the idea of settling, of taking the best you can find of the people who happen to go to your school, live in your neighborhood, or work in your office seems downright quaint. Why settle for what you can stumble into when you can instead search for someone optimal in a much larger pool of potentials? Now consider modern healthcare and ask yourself why, when an ever-increasing number of us can expect to live productive lives into our 80s and 90s, we would want to have kids while in our teens and 20s. Why not go out and see the world first, get educated and figure out who we are before being expected to properly raise and educate a kid of our own? The world being what it is today, with global climate change and the other repercussions of overpopulation, why not just skip the kids thing altogether? Why not have dogs, cats, turtles, or a cactus garden instead? Why not be happy with your partner or partners, live a happy life, and leave the having of children to other people? This is a good question with many answers. There are plenty of excellent reasons to have kids and to go through some of the traditional motions, even if they're edited a bit for relative age and lifestyle priorities. But there are an increasing number of acceptable, even desirable models for relationships, and many of them having nothing to do at all with raising children and having families. This is due to the aforementioned technologies, an increased international awareness, and the widespread availability of new options worth considering in nearly every vital sector of life. This potential for change is not something we should look down upon. It's something we should embrace. It's not scary, it's wonderful. It will result in a greater number of happy people enjoying custom-fitted lives rather than the majority of us trying to squeeze into something clearly sewn for someone else. I applaud this change, and not only because my own relationship model already deviates from the norm. I applaud it because relationships, like everything else around us, are going to evolve. They always have. Do you think people in the 1950s were dating according to the dearly held traditions of the 1850s? Nope. Embracing this evolution allows us to bend with the times rather than being bent by the times. It allows us to be part of new movements as they emerge, rather than feeling like we're outside of them, watching from a safe distance as life goes by without us. As I travel, I sometimes feel as if my choices in life have set me apart, have pulled me into another orbit far from the primary motion of the planet, as if by not walking in the footprints of the majority of people who have come before me, I've fallen out of some understood lockstep, and as such am no longer part of that larger story being written. But when I stop and take stock, consider all the variables and opportunities, I know that's not the case. I know we're each dancing to our own dance, figuring out our own steps as we go along. Even those who live what seem to be very traditional lifestyles have worked in their own variations, their own bend of the knee, tap of the heel, wink at their partner, or partners, or beautiful cactus garden. There are no wrong steps in this dance. And even if we sometimes feel that we're in the middle of a competition judged on our mastery of the Charleston or the tango or the wife and kid shuffle, there are plenty of other yardsticks by which we can measure our own independent growth and progression, whichever dance we might prefer. You just listened to part two of the post titled Misconnections by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. This episode is supported by FX's Grotesquerie, a new series from executive producer Ryan Murphy. Heinous crimes unsettle a small community, and the local detective feels these atrocities are eerily personal, as if someone or something is taunting her. Starring Nisi Nash Betts, Courtney B. Vance, Leslie Manville, and Travis Kelsey. FX's Grotesquerie premieres September 25th on FX. Stream on Hulu. Making everyone happy on vacation isn't easy, but you know what is? Going to Aruba. 
All you have to do is walk out your door to find pristine pools, relaxing white sand beaches, and an island teeming with outdoor activities that'll put a smile on any face. You won't just feel great, you'll all feel great, filled with a calmer, more peaceful vibe that radiates Aruba's warmth. And the best part is, it never fades. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your family trip at aruba.com. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Can't help but to create unique perspectives on relationships if you're a full-time traveler, as Colin is. Certainly all things, including relationships, are constantly in flux, as Colin mentioned, and I couldn't think of a better person to represent and illustrate that idea than him. So thank you very much, Colin, for letting us share your work. And for everyone else, I hope you enjoyed this two-part feature on ORD. There's plenty more where that came from, and we will be back with more of it tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.